It's in time, but you're also contingent. What I'm saying is that it's possible for entities to exist without reference to time. So for example, mathematics is a realm, or it's a discipline that can be done, if you like, or exists without reference to time. Same as logic itself. Logic itself is something, the rules of logic, can be, can be understood, can be demarcated without reference to time. So not everything that exists ontologically or metaphysically, instrumentally, needs to exist with reference to time. Therefore, I can still make the contingency argument because contingency as a concept, as a as a as, as understood concept, could be made without reference. But, yeah, we'll be right. Yes. But you have to prove film and you can make it all of it. What do you mean prove? Well, that's what you're trying to do. Yes. You're trying to prove that so you agree with this point, yeah? can know everything. No, but good. So we agree on this point, right? So we agree on the... We agree. I mean, it would, it would be kind of ridiculous yes. if after all this time we exactly. arrived in the... No, I don't, I don't think something can depend on something. I mean, that's the function. No, no, not only that. We agree the contingency Perfect, exists, but, yes. but you, you're sitting out to prove A that Allah definitely does exist. But what I'm sure, yes. And moreover, Perfect. You, to prove that he knows everything. But what you also said here, which is very good. The mountain. Good, no, it's, it's not the mountain. I think you're going to come to it. You're, you're an intelligent man. And I, I believe you're going I'm to come. I'm a genius. You're, you're in a, a hopeless person. But you're yes. giving it a good go. Yeah, thank you. Right. So if I'm going against a genius like you, then hopefully I'll learn. Because I'm, I always like to learn more. I mean, we have different worldviews. Yes, yeah, good. You do what I can. Okay, so what I was going to say was this, is that basically... We sharpen each other. Yeah. What I was going to say was that, is that basically, when it comes to... Uh, so what we've established is that dependent things exist, yeah? And also, we've established that things can exist atemporally, yeah? Like mathematics, etc. Now, what I'm saying is that... We have conjecture. <coughs> We don't, I mean, the existence of mathematics could be no more than saying that we believe it's the case. But uh, the existence like, of mathematics is, 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 we can all say, we can do, mathematics can be realized, it can be understood or can be conceptualized without reference to temporary. It's a concept. That's yeah. the point. So, yeah. so, so conceiving something doesn't mean that it's actual. Good. In that's, now going back to realism, actual realism, but, idealism. But here's the point. Yeah. We're just basically saying that it's possible to conceive of things. But we have to be much more in the case of Allah. We can't just say it's possible to conceive of I get it. things. No, you're, no. Like, you're like, dude, I'm going to prove it. No, no, good. But what I'm saying to you is this. It's not only something which you can conceive. It's, now, it depends on what, re what, what vision you have. Like, what uh, are you an idealist? Are you a Julius or a materialist? I don't know. Yeah? But what I'm saying is that already, we have, if you, you can't, we've kind of established that materialism or naturalism, if you like, in a, in a, in a clearest sense of the, or the strictest sense of the word, couldn't be a consistent way of understanding the world because we've said that mathematics is something which is just I, I mean, I think naive really, or a kind of naive physicalism. I don't, but, but I mean, that's like philosophical detritus. No one really believes in that stuff. You know, since the collapse of... Uh, so what's your what's your what's your, what's your view of what's your what's your like uh, yeah. uh, naive realism? Yeah, what, what's your what, what, have what you is my metaphysical view? Yes. What are my metaphysics? Yes. yes. Uh, yeah, I think I'm uh, troubling me for you. I'm uh, yeah. Uh, hard philosophical skeptic. Yeah, so, but are you, uh, would, you, would, you, so, would you, would you, would you, would you identify as a so, so, realist, anti-realist, idealist, naturalist, or what, where would you go in, in those camps? Ah, see, but that's Do the whole point. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm skeptic to the point of theorism, which is what makes your job so hard, right? Because convincing a skeptic is super, super difficult, right? Okay. Because you have to build the foundations and show their true, and then build basically the case, show that God exists, and then build your mission case. And so, what I'm asking you to do is to do that from the ground zero. So, but I am actually that way. I'm, I'm uh, yeah, pretty much close to a third skeptic. So, but I, I would, I, 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 but I'm like you in this thing. I would put I'm, I'm like you in this Last thing I'll say is that I would assign certain qualities. Okay. In a hazy fashion, to certain things being the case, but you're in a very 
very different account, which is a favour of absolute discipline and uncertainty, which I think is like Mount Everest for cliff block, right? Because I, I admit your job is much harder, but that's why... But you're, you're, you're saying that probabilistic it. arguments are, are epistemologically justifiable from your perspective, that you could make a probabilistic argument. And you... It might be, that's the point. I'm a pyrrhic skeptic, so I would assign probability <laughs> to that point. When you're, when you're making that probabilistic uh, argument, where would your starting point be? If someone was making a probabilistic argument to, to you, where would your starting point be in terms of substance theory? Where would it, where would it be? Would you start off as a dualist position, or an idealist position, or a naturalist position, or a realist position, or an activist position? Pure inquisition. When someone tells me that they're certain that there is a God who knows absolutely everything, I'm like, I need to listen to this guy. Because either he has no idea what he's talking about, or he does, and I need to pay very close attention because, you know, it's very difficult, uh, epistemologically speaking, to provide demonstration of the very much. Yeah. Because, like you've read his uh, Islamic theology, right? So, so you know about the struggles of uh, Ibn Sina, of, uh, uh, yeah, Ibn Sina or um, uh, Ibn Taymiyyah, or uh, Al-Ghazali, the um, uh, deliverance from skepticism, no, uh, deliverance from error, right? Uh, Many of the greatest philosophers in Islam, like many of the greatest philosophers who followed them, ran into hard skepticism and it defeated many. Right? They then turned, they didn't lose their faith, but they they lost belief that they could really prove by, as Ghazali says, by concatenation of proofs and arguments that this is the case. But you're saying by concatenation of proofs and arguments you can do what Ghazali failed at. No, but then he and changed so the conclusion. My ears go. Because Ghazali changed his mind afterwards. On the issue. Yes, but, but kind of I, like related car. He he, he went yeah, through the same but the same. Yeah, they're so similar. Yeah, yeah. And so few people get them. Yeah, that's impressive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so I, I was going to say but that. But how did this argument? Like, he went through a skeptic process. Yeah. But how did he come to the conclusion that he was still believing? He, he he's the one who made the common cat. Yeah, William Lane Craig Hughes kind of cosmological argument. I mean, it wasn't original to him. It's not the argument. Uh, well, he's risking it in that way. So basically, uh, he wrote. Yeah. And basically, he has his breakdown. He's this genius, you know. Uh, he uh, goes into the magical. He's in the middle of uh, teaching his students. <laughs> yes. Come on. So basically at the end of that book, and I've only read the English, right? He says it wasn't by this great logical process of proofs and errors and so on, which he was a master. Right? Yes, yes, so he wrote like, yeah, uh, yes. yeah, he basically he looks at the Sufis yes, and he yes. says somehow they were approaching. <laughs> but yes. they don't do it, they do it as if in a dream, right? And so he says that it's by this, uh, he actually says the sweet light, the faith that Allah calls to uh, be a uh, and I hope that that sweet light of faith comes into your heart as well, man. You don't say no. You don't say no, bro. Look, it's been a pleasure. We're not done. We didn't, you didn't get to I, I need to, I need to pray. But okay. Uh, okay. But I, do you know, here's, I'll be honest with you. I have a sneaky suspicion that you already know this proof. What? You already know? Look, I have a sneaky suspicion. I have... Dude, you do. You've read Ghazali, you've read the book of Ghazali. Don't pray and let's have a little... What? Is it time to, is it time to pray now? Is it Maghrib time yet? That's when I went, right, that's it, I've had enough. It was a round. If we need to, and then let's just quickly finish off. Okay, like let's, let's finish off now, I think it's a bit tight. Oh, yeah. yeah, okay. So, yeah, I mean, we have some names here, right? I mean, like, I came from the Western tradition where you hear these names of the Muslim philosophers, yes. and you start with this kind of... By the way, can I ask a question? What, what did you study? You studied philosophy, yeah? Did you study it formally? Yeah, I've studied yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, but I've studied cancer, neuroscience, big film, started two technology companies. You are up against impossible opposition. Oh my! But you, I think you, I think you got well. The point is this. The point, the 
quite brilliant really to say that I came from what I think is what you call an Orientalist, right? A, a kind of like post colonial, quite racist, like kind of like a right. right. And I picked these up like, yeah, yeah, it was let's see. I was like, mid, well, like uh, Descartes, uh, like um, uh, Emmanuel Kant. I was like, these are some of the best thinkers that we had. And I don't know about the translation, but I can see how sharp some of like, the even is. Uh, yeah, hold on. Any of the great thinkers that I am others. And I was just incredibly impressed. Not with Ghazali as a philosopher, but with Ghazali as a speaker's corner, because he was so good at disassembling people's position, but he was so good at disassembling his own. That was his problem. And so he and his Ashari, the Valkyrie, the Valkyrie, the Valkyrie, the Valkyrie, the Ghazali, the most Muslim of the world, is Ghazali. That's the first 40 years of his life. And so that's why. Uh, I ask you the question because yeah. but you know, you benefit, know them. You yeah. have benefits that he didn't, right? You yeah. have like all of modern knowledge. You have like Google, and you have many people around you. You have the hundreds of sources and these guys, which were all, you know, the divine reality. That's quite the claim. And not one that's only with me. And so that's why I just, you know, I see, I see, I'm interested I respect, in, in I the respect question. where you're coming from now. But once again, I think basically the argument almost convinces from the literature is an argument made by Ibn Sina, Avicenna. Okay, so the, I've, I've written a book called Kant was Arguments. You? Yeah, yeah, I've written a book. It's actually been peer reviewed as well. That's a journal. That has been reviewed. It's been reviewed by, by, I was doing at that time, when I say peer reviewed here, I should be clear. Some, some journals need to be peer reviewed by two things and I bring it back with like amendments and stuff, yeah? But this is because I was writing this as part of my uh, master, one of my master's degrees, I was doing it in so What are you, what are your master's in? Uh, well, now he knows it, don't tell me then what you put that. Uh, okay, I'll, anyway. Yeah, it's fine, it's not fine. Okay. So, you, so you wrote a book on... On, on Kalanka's work on it. And so, my, my teacher, his name was Emin Shahada. He was, um, he's basically, uh, he's one of the editors of Brill. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, he's, he's a great teacher. I learned a lot from him for a long time. And then when he was teaching me, one of the things that I really fell in love with to go to was the Lutheran temple. Because we went through all of those kind of classical scholars, and one of the ones that I felt was, yeah, I don't, I don't agree with him theologically, but I felt as a philosopher, his theology is yeah, it's not unrecognizable. To yeah, yeah, to yeah, Muslims. Yeah, but the philosophy, and I think that deep down. Al Ghazali and Ibn Taymiyyah and everyone that came after him recognized the genius. And they cleaned up the theological aspects, but they took the arguments, in yeah. my opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 so people like Al Ghazali, they actually took the arguments of Al Ghazali. So, so the argument basically that I'm making to you is, is his argument, not mine. And it, 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 it's the argument of basically it's called Al Siddiqeen, or the argument he makes in a book called the Inshallah to Tendi Hat, or pointers and kind of reminders, which is a stamp mark. It's, it's, it's translated like it's Peter Adamson has some good stuff in the English language we shook him to the soul. Um, so basically the argument is this is that he says about contingency, he says the same thing as I said, you can't have an infinite regress of causes or an infinite regress of and by the way he was an eternalist, right? So he believes in the eternal universe, but he says that there's a difference between believing an infinite regress of um, time and an infinite regress of causes. So he and other people believed in an infinite regress of things. Like Ibn Taymiyyah believed in perpetual yeah. recreation. Yeah. Which is uh, so uh, creation. <laughs> yeah. So not destruction, but creation in the past, perpetual in the, in the, in the past. Anyway, so... Well, uh, you mean like, a, okay, so, so an infinite regress of others evolving worlds. Ibn Taymiyyah basically believed in something called Hawadis La Awal Allah. Which means that God continued to create perpetually into the past. Okay. So there was no beginning, if you like. Oh. And, and, uh, so he was, in many ways, he was similar to the Eternalist. I've read like three different opinions about what Ibn Taymiyyah's uh, opinions were yeah. about uh, 
He wasn't the, pro the creation of the prophet, the first prophet, yeah. Adam. And uh, I think he changed his views of the Prophet. Yeah. On this um, issue, that's the only thing I came across in his book was done with Abdul Aqil Allah. I mean, to be honest with you, he's written a few books, yeah. but, but this is, seems to be his opinion. Okay. Because yeah. how do you know what Ibn Taymiyyah's final opinion was? It was through his, uh, his student Ibn Qayyim, basically. Yeah. He, he, he changed the opinion of few things, but um, basically, he believed in pre, uh, pre uh, perpetual creation of uh, pre eternity. And um, so he wasn't an eternalist, but he believed in an infinite universe of things. Yeah. Ibn believed in an infinite universe of time, so in a sense, an infinite, uh, or an infinite of, infinity of time. So he believed in the same thing as Aristotle believed in, the Farabi believed in, the Kindi believed in. But the point is, is that they all rejected an infinite universe of causation. Like even uh, Aristotle rejected it, and Farabi, yeah, Farabi, Aristotle, Plato, I think as well, you know, Avi Sarno definitely rejected it. The Jews rejected it, like my Jews, etc. etc. Uh, Aquinas rejected it. So I haven't actually seen anything in medieval literature, going back to the Atlantic time, of anyone who, who said that they believe in an infinite regress of uh, causation. I've, never, I've not seen that. I've seen them believe in an infinite regress of things perpetually into the past and so on, but not of causation here. So the argument he's making is. There is a cyclical eternal uh, yeah. birth and death, which is so it's basically just a loop. It appears yeah. eternal to us. Yeah, but that's an yeah. eternalist view, isn't it? Yeah, but the point is it isn't infinitely regressive into the past. Yeah. It basically is but they, were, but they believe back in the future. But, but eternalists like that believed in uh, b b believed in if you said that's hindered. Yeah, yeah. I haven't looked into it. Yeah, I'm not an atheist. Yeah. Like a visionary. But would they say that there's an infinite of causes as well? Sorry. Would they say there's an infinite universe of causation? There was just no answer. Because, like I said to you before, so, Ibn Taymiyyah and Abi Salah but both believed in infinite something. But they were linear. Yes. Yeah. No, but the Taoist view or the Hindu view is on the endless circle of life and death. Yes, okay. But then, once again, it's not necessarily causation of that. I don't know. I, I couldn't tell you. Yeah, yeah. Reincarnation, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, but so, um, so Abi Salah had this view that he basically talked about the infinite regress of the things and he says that's impossible to do right so here's his argument basically his proof was this and I think it's, it's the strongest one we have in my opinion yeah he basically uh, a live bit took over and, and done his continuous argument with it but I think it's from him yeah because that's something that genuinely didn't come from the, uh, from the Greeks it, that was innovative he says the, the contingency argument. I don't think he came from the Greeks. There's nothing like it from the Greeks. But he says that this is one thing that's a contribution. He says that basically, if you have a series of things, all of which are contingent, you have two possibilities. Either that, that series itself is independent, or that it depends on something external and independent. That's the, the only two possibilities. Because you can't, he says, you can't have a series of things. Well, which, Plato made that argument. This but I don't think he made it in the, in the way that he made it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I don't think so. Because uh, Aristotle did it when he was talking about the physics and the metaphysics. When I looked at the works of uh, Aristotle and his references to Plato. There's, a, there's a something called a thermistic argument, which is basically about uh, the original causation, which, which is very much like the, uh, the thing which uh, has no contingency. Right? The, yes, the, the yes. uncontingent cause. Yes. Yeah, that's like a, a thermistic argument. The interesting thing about this is saying. So, 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 so here's why I always make the argument in two ways here, yeah, because even Tufail, who's another guy, who's um, also kind of not known, he's not traditionalist in that sense, not known to, within the Islamic circles. Yeah, he, he said that there's two things. He said you can either make an argument from causation or an argument from contingency. Yeah. And he says those two things are not the same. Yeah. He says, but you should make both of them at the same time. Yeah, and then if, if, if this one doesn't work, then this one has to work. That's why I tried to do that with, like, basically, okay. it's like, I'm not getting this myself. Well, I'm saying to you, look. That's why he said, and all. That's right. So it's, these are, this is not me. I'm just standing on the shoulders of giants. In that sense, that's what I'm saying. So, and you're tall. And I'm tall already. So, so basically the argument is that the, the, the contingent things can either, uh, so the, the series of contingent things, if it's infinite, it can either be independent or, de or dependent. If it's dependent, it needs to be independent. If it's not, then how could it exist? So it has to be, uh, so basically it has to be either an independent outside of it or it has to be the independent itself. Now, there's a secondary argument that's connected to that. The argument that is secondarily made is that it's called um, uh, the, uh, the argument of parts. So basically that there can't be like 
a series yeah. of things. It's like a Xenos paradox. Yeah, so, yeah. so in the sense that... You basically you just can't reduce something down because there's an infinite number of parts. Never yeah, yeah. but then, so, then, so therefore, you know, because the parts, so for example, that series is made out of parts, and the parts depend upon itself. Anything that's made out of parts is dependent, basically, that's the idea. Anything that's made out of parts is dependent. The series is made out of parts, therefore the series is dependent. Therefore, what we need is something which is independent and it's not made out of parts. As long as it's linear. linear. Yes. As long as it goes back progressively. But this is why the Taoists are like the bad Because they... You know, you come here a lot, and I know you believe in your religion. But you admit that there's a little bit of you that wants some attention. Yes. You know I mean? And I was watching Slack. <laughs> Like, me too, right? I have to admit the same. Yeah. Just like, uh, I don't know what that's about. Anyway, so last thing I'd like to say is just like a kind of personal kind of general state of the world kind of question. The world seems in a less good place, even though you don't remember me, than a couple of years ago when we debated. Like, there, is, uh, there seems to me a slow uh, trust of information, news, fear of new technology, artificial intelligence. The world is changing out of kind of all perspective. Um, the first world countries, if I can use that, insert whatever the like, kind of like politically correct term is, are becoming progressively less religious, it seems. About the state of the world and the state of Islam as it engages with <laughs> so by modernity, I mean, let's forget the new atheists and the, 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 they're gone now, right? It's kind of like a, a more kind of like sensitive kind of degree, a less shrill kind of just kind of trying to get along and make sense of the world right? Sam Harris is not beating the new body, Chris is not beating the collective in the how, how do you think of how uh, the state of the world is on atheism and the kind of general sense of chaos that people apprehend? One thing is that two th in the Western Hemisphere, and especially in the Western part of Europe and America, there's two things which are on the rise, Islam and atheism. And that seems to be as quite like an ironic set of affairs that both of those things are quite Maybe maybe we should be uh, should be wrestling here with that sort of uh, like slap me. Yeah. Um, both those are fine. Both those are fine. Much faster than anything. Okay, maybe maybe in yeah yeah. So but in the world generally. And I think, you know, the thing is, is that here's what we need to understand. Now, these are two different paradigms. People that, like me, traditionalist Muslims, have certain paradigms which I'm sure you're very aware of. Do you know what I mean? Like, you, you've looked into our tradition and you've seen it. A lot of people are ignorant of that. And I think that one thing that we need to know is that we need to, both of us need to know the nuances, like, of both of our traditions. So, for example, a lot of the problems I face is caricaturing of certain aspects of jurisprudence in Islam, law and so on. And so my what I try to achieve is that I try and get people to mean like inflexible aspects. Yeah. So I feel like there's, there's so much more flexibility that, if, that exists in Sharia that people I think are coming up. And um, and also from the other side there's a lot to learn about the West and the, the Arab world doesn't know 